Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, AI Technical Founder, and today we will learn about recurrent neural networks with PyTorch. Now, why would we want to use recurrent neural networks as opposed to, for example, convolutional neural networks that, as we've learned before? Well, many applications involve dependencies over time. This means our current output depends not only on the current input, but also on past inputs. And suppose we're dealing with image classification, which we've done before, and we want to answer the question, what is this object? What class is it? What category is this object? But now, a CNN would be good for, for that, but suppose you want to answer the question, is this object moving? One image is not enough. You would, you would have to, for example, grab a video and split it up into a, a sequence of video frames, and then then uh, you would need a network that can learn from a sequence because the, the to answer that question you you cannot you can't only look at this at a current or one image you need to look at a sequence of images o over time and the network will learn uh, the, the the motion or the features of of movement and then make make that prediction so that's why we need RNNs recurrent neural networks to process sequences of data so the structure is is very simple it's actually very uh, similar as we've learned before so in general it's still the same idea of getting grabbing some getting some input x some input tensor x and then there's some weights here you connecting it to the to a hidden layer and then another set of set of, of weights another weights tensor here connecting it to the out to the output uh, layer so it's the same thing. We're mapping inputs to outputs, and the job of the, of the network is to approximate a function that the best maps um, inputs to outputs by by finding those learnable parameters here that make up those those uh, tensors, those weight tensors here. But now the difference here is that for in this simple case of a hidden layer, you have uh, a weights tensor here also, but that connects to itself. So that is representing memory, that there's some kind of me um, memory that, that it's learning and feeding it back into itself. So here in the hidden layer, we call this the state in, in an RNN, in a recurrent neural network. And if we actually unfold this network so we can see over time what's happening or over a sequence, because X is not just this one input, this one image, for example, it may be a sequence of images or a sequence of words, for example, in a sentence. So here you can see the the one of the first word, let's say it's just three uh, three elements in a sequence. Let's say the numbers one, two, and three. So you're feeding in a sequence of numbers one, two, and three here. So for the number one here, it's going to come in. It's going it's going to to pass to pass through through the hidden layer, and then some state is going to be to be to be calculated, and it's going and that state is going to be passed to the next time step we call it so to the next the next uh, every time step is each time the network processes an element in the sequence so for the next for, this is for the number one and then for the number two the two comes in but then it also t takes in the state from the previous time step so for the for the number one whatever the network learned the value for those parameters is going to pass it in so now this current uh, the output here for the second um, part of the sequence not only depends on, on, on itself, but it also depends on the past and the previous input. And as you can see here for um, arbitrary length sequence, you can see how there's dependencies going back, uh, dependencies over time, over the time step, over the previous uh, imp, um, elements of the sequence that were the, that were put in. Now another example of the, where in natural language processing for example where this might be where this is useful is for example suppose you want to do sentiment analysis. You want to classify a tweet for example, let's say in the simplest case whether it's good or bad kind of sentiment. So you you take in a sequence of words, the tweet, the words that make up the tweet and then you want to to output whether it's whether it's good or bad. Now the output not only depends on the last word in the tweet, but it depends on the entire tweet, on all of the words that make up that 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 tweet. So that's why we we need an RNN in in, in this case. Now, RNNs, typical RNNs, vanilla regular RNNs are only good when the dependencies over time or over time steps are very short, meaning let's say ten or something like that. Once you go big, no, more like backwards, more than that, you start getting the vanishing gradient problem because as, as, as you do back propagation through time and you start calculating the partial derivatives they get smaller and smaller and smaller until they essentially vanish so you don't really have long-term memory of what's happened way back 
So that's where the, like in practice, actually, we don't really impl uh, create RNNs. We create a special kind of RNN, which we call an LSTM uh, network. So it contains these, it's, well, these are called long short-term memory cells, which you, you there's, these cells, the, the the hidden layer here in, in our recurrent neural network is also keeping not only a short-term memory from what's come recently, but also a long-term memory of everything that's come before and from, since, since it started. And it chooses what to what to keep, what to remove, what's relevant, what's irrelevant. So it's very, very good. And in practice, works really, really well. So now you're, you not only have a, uh, just a normal, just a state, now you have also a, a memory. So we'll we'll go ahead. So here we'll learn how the structure of this RNN LSTM is in PyTorch, and we'll we'll learn a little bit more about um, its its hidden state and just how to structure, it, and then we'll we'll move forward um, in the next videos for uh, what what we can predict uh, using that. So for an LSTM, for example, looking at words in a sentence, the hidden state of the long short term memory cell here will change based on each new word it sees. So an input word will will come in, a state will go in, will go in this direction, and then for the next word, it's going to take in the state from the previous word. So you see there's there's this, these dependencies over time, and each one is producing a, an output here in this case. So we can and we can use the hidden state to predict the next word in, in the sequence, right? So for example, help identify the type of word in a language model, and there's just a lot of different applications. So here in the case of, of, of PyTorch, this is a structure that we have, and from torch.nn, this is a normal the package that we that we know that module neural networks in PyTorch. We have an LSTM here, and we can construct it like this. So it takes three parameters. So the first parameter here, uh, by the way, they're all uh, three-dimensional tensors. And here, that, that's what it expects, the inputs to be 3D tensors. So first of all, the input dimension here, the input size of this LSTM here in PyTorch, it takes the number of inputs and then the hidden the dimensions, the hidden dimensions. So this is basically the size of the hidden state. So the number of, of outputs here from, from, each, from each cell at each time step, and then the number of layers, because you can actually stack these long short-term memory cells, these RNNs, you can stack them so you can have uh, one, for example, in the output of that one, feeding it into the next one, and so on. So you can have more more than one. But here, but in PyTorch here has a default value of one, so just as you see in this this um, di diagram here, and then it has a shape, so a size uh, that it that it outputs, and then of course the input here. Now, and then the hidden state. So once an LSTM has been defined with input and hidden dimensions, we can now call it and retrieve the output and hidden state at every time step. So at every time step, the our RNN here, our LSTM network, will actually output its hidden the hidden state, which will be feed, feed, which will keep feeding into itself. So the inputs here, um, we have we have the input, a tensor contain, containing the, containing the values. To so a tensor containing the values in the input sequence. So we have the sequence length, the batch, and the input size, and we'll see in a moment just how how that's how that how that works. And we have a tensor containing the initial hidden state that's as, as input, and then a tensor containing the the memory element. So we have the state, the state of the cell, the state of the of the network based on the previous time time step, but also a memory, and that and that that's exactly what what we want here. And here it'll become clear as, as we go through this, what are the dimensions and, and, and how it works. So let's take a simple example and say we want to process a single sentence through an LSTM. Now we want to run the sequence model over one sentence, and in this case, giraffes in a field. Our input should look like this one by four row, row vector here. So we have four input words, and then we can decide how many outputs to generate at each time step. We can actually change that. That's a hyperparameter that we can tune. And then say we want uh, each LSTM cell to generate three hidden state values here in, the, in this case. And we'll keep the number of layers to the default size of one, just, just, just to keep it simple. So in this example co code, we'll, we'll go through it and we'll see how, how, how it works. So we'll import our packages, torch, torch NN, matplotlib. So let's, let's actually go ahead. So we're going to define a simple LSTM. So first we'll define our here our hyperparameters so the uh, or the parameters that we need. So the input dimensions in this case it's four. Um, and by the way, in this in this case, 
to keep it simple for illustrative purposes, we're going to use just numerical values. So instead of a word that we're feeding in, like this word, we're just going to feed in numbers, like random numbers. And the same, just four random numbers here per sequence. So a sequence of four random numbers. So the so it's, since it's four numbers in, in the sequence, in the input sequence, the input dimension is four. And then the hidden dimension is three. So we want three values to be to be to be generated. And then the the the, the tensors, the weight tensors, the learnable parameters, the network will learn those per, those parameters that will map those better, that map those the best. So here we create an LSTM variable from torch and n. So dot LSTM, we pass in the input size here, four, right? Four elements in, in each sequence, and the hidden size. Pretty simple. And then and the third parameter was just one. The, de the default values, how many LSTMs stacked on each other. So just one here. So now we're going to create, to make five input sequences of four random values each. So so this is essentially our batch. So we have just one batch size, one batch in this uh, simple case, and each one has five sequences here. So let's go ahead and run it. So let's see our, we're going to print, print these inputs. So we use a simple list comprehension here and gener generates just uh, 10 sorts of random values uh, here. With, the, with these dimensions, so just one here, because we want a, a, ve a, a vector type of structure here. So one and then an input dimension here, which, which in this case is four. So we just want a vector essentially like this one of four values, but they're numerical values. So that's it. So we see we have our tensor here, four random values, and we have another one, two, three, four, five. So five tensors, so that's our batches. Our batch contains five tensors, and each um, and each tensor is, is a sequence that contains four elements each sequence. So now we have to initialize our hidden state in our cell memory. So again, we just use a, a torch random here random random tensor with these with these dimensions. So this is the layer. So just just one here the batch size again just one and then just the hidden dimensions here because we want actually the the output here of our hidden state of our LSTM to be this hidden dimension so that's why we the the out the for this third one we have we have three and at any point feel free to pause and just make sure that 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 it makes sense so this this takes a little bit of thought pause and and, ju and just thing is um it's it gets a little bit more complex than a regular uh fit forward neural network so here we're just going to do a, a, a for loop to run through, uh, to iterate through our tensors. And we're going to pass them in into our LSTM. So it's going to produce an output and then our hidden state. And the hidden state is a tuple containing here our, our hidden state and the cell memory. So here for our LSTM, we're just going to pass it in. And remember, it's a 3D tensor. So we're just going to, to, to reshape it to add. So we're adding a batch dimension here. So one, one. And then minus one, it just means it will adapt. It will find what is the the, the size that, that makes it work, that make, that makes this the that makes the shape of the tensor work. So we're just passing in our our, our tensor here. Make sure that we have that batch uh, dimension. And then let's look at the at the outputs here. So the output we have for for the output we have a tensor a uh, of of three elements here. And then for our hidden state, we have two we have two tensors here. Of course, we have our hidden state and our and our cell memory and the output and you see here can it's very consistent in that the shape has contains three elements why because our output our hidden dimensions is three so the out the lstm will output uh, tensors with that with that shape that contain three three elements based on based on this value here so that's what we have uh, here and we're just iter iterating through and this is just a simple example and we're just printing out the tensor so you so you can see uh, here so we have okay, so we have we have that, and yeah, okay. So I mean, it's just just so you know, here the the hidden actually contains both. So we have the the tensor of three values for the hidden state, and then for the cell memory. So there are two pull always they 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 come together. This is how it's done in PyTorch. So see that the output and hidden tensors have a length of three as specified in the hidden dimensions parameter. Now, it's not very efficient for very large sequences of data to do for loops. So you can also process them all at once, which is very nice. So the first step is to concatenate all of our input sequences here. So we grab our list of, of, of PyTorch tensors of random values, and we concatenate them. So we just cut them. So we just put them all together, kind of stack them on top of each other, just concatenate them, and then just reshade them to, to what to what we want here. So we have, so the length, right, of the, of, 
So how many tensors do we have in that list? And then one for a, for a batch size. So we're adding that dimension and then the rest, just whatever it needs it needs to be, minus one, we'll just make it adapt. And we'll see in this case uh, what it is. So for our input size here, it turns out to be four, of course, because we have four elements in each sequence. So five is just in that batch, we have five sequences, which is one batch, the, bat the batch size. And, and then here we have the number of elements in each one of these five sequences. So that is the size of, of, these, of this input. We initialize, uh, as before, our hidden state and our cell memory. And again, we just but now we just, instead of a for loop, we just pass in our inputs here, our, our inputs tensor here to, in, into, the L, into the LSTM. And as you can see the output shape, we get uh, this tensor that contains these three, again, the shape, the output size of three matches because that's that's what it outputs here. Our our hidden uh, layer here, LSTM layer, outputs these three. For each one, so we have one, two, three, four, five, our five input sequences. So that's our whole batch here. And, and each one, as input, it was, it was four. And as output, it's three. So actually, the weights, the tensor that represents the weights connect, connecting the, the inputs to the hidden layer, to our LSTM layer, it, it has that shape. It's a, it's a four by four by three, right? So four inputs and then three outputs. So here, so we have that. And so here we, here we see that the output shape, the shape of, of the output is five. So our five sequences, batch size of one, but now instead of four, it's changed to three. It's very consistent, very, very nice. And then again, the, the, the hidden state, the tuple containing the, the hidden the state of, 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 the, of the network, the LSTM, and the memory. Very, very, very nice. So again, this might take a little bit of time to sink in. Make sure you just pause, take your time, re, uh, and make sure that, that it makes sense because we're dealing now with, with sequences. So the complexity is a little bit higher, but it's very, very powerful as, as we'll see later. So, so here we learned the structure of the input and output of an LSTM in PyTorch. And next we will learn more about exactly how an LSTM represents long-term and short-term memory in its hidden state. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below, and I will see you next time.